Welcome back. On the previous two episodes, we talked about who God the Father is and who God the Son is. And if you haven't watched those, I recommend that you go back and watch those episodes. But on today's episode, we'd like to talk about who is the Holy Spirit. And just like the Father and the Son have many different names in the scriptures, so too does the Holy Ghost. And this is actually really important, not just for the Holy Spirit, but also for the Father and the Son, because as we read these names, they actually give us insight into who they are and what they do. And in particular, on this episode, we're going to talk about the Holy Ghost. And so the Holy Ghost is called things like uh, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Truth, the Spirit of Promise, and also the Comforter, just to name a few. And all of these help give us an understanding about what the Spirit does and who He is and how He works in our life, that He truly guides us into all truth. The Holy Ghost is the power and presence of God. And by the Spirit, God made all things. And we ourselves, as we read in the King James, Genesis chapter 2, verses 4 through 7, we were created spiritually before we were ever, ever physically placed upon the earth. And that we actually are meant to be temples for the Holy Spirit, as it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Now, we are to be a habitation of God. Now, that sounds really cool, uh, but what exactly does that mean for you and me? How does it relate to our life today? And just like we shared in the previous two episodes, a couple of testimonies, I would like to do that again because I think it helps really uh, relate to us, helps us to understand uh, this concept of the Holy Ghost. And so the testimony I'd like to share with you at this time is one of Arthur Oakman. Uh, many probably have heard of him, some maybe haven't. Uh, but Arthur Oakman was a minister, and in 1940, during World War II, he and his family lived in England, and he himself was actually from England. He, that was his native country, and he was serving there. And in 1940, he and his family were moving from one town to another town, and the distance was about 70 miles. And while his wife and their newborn baby were at home, he was traveling back to their old home to kind of tie up loose ends. And while he did so, he looked in the mail and he saw a letter from someone whom he had never met personally, but he knew very well. And that was Mildred. Mildred was his wife's cousin. And they were about the same age. And Mildred had a son named Eddie who was similar in age to Arthur Oakman's son. And in this letter, she expressed tragically that Eddie had, had drowned. He had gone into the woods and fall, fall, um, he fell into a pond and he lost his life. And as Oakman read this, he was shocked, obviously. But it didn't go too much further than that because, you know, even though he had some correspondence, he didn't exactly know her. And so he finished up the rest of his business and he got on the train to go home. And uh, the train uh, has different compartments and he was in a compartment by himself. And as the, the journey was going forth, as he was going home, the Spirit just gently kind of impressed upon him this question. If you could give up the life of your son in exchange for Eddie so that he could have his life back, would you do it? And of course, uh, Oakman he didn't really want to entertain that question. Um, he didn't want to answer it at all. And so he just kind of pushed it, pushed it aside. And as the journey continued, that same spirit came again asking him that same question. Would you be willing to give the life of your son so that this family, so that Mildred could have her son back? And again, he didn't really want to answer it, but this time he said, firmly, more firmly, no. That's too much to ask of me. That's too much to ask of anyone. My boy is special to me. And so this conversation between Oakman and the Lord continued for uh, quite a while. And finally, as he was just sitting in the quiet, 
the Spirit came upon him. And it was, as he puts it, something that he would never forget. That he had never felt the Spirit like that prior or since that experience. And as he felt this love, this deep, deep love, he was able to enter into the grief of Mildred and her family. And he wanted with all of his soul, with so much longing, to be able to bring healing into their family so much, so strongly that words can't even begin to describe it. And again, that question came from the Lord. Arthur, would you be willing to give up your son so that Mildred could have her boy back. And this time, Oakman said yes. He said, Lord, under this spirit, I would do that. What is the spirit that I'm feeling? And the Lord shared with him, that this is the spirit of endowment. That this is the spirit by which he made the world, by which he made us. He said, this is the spirit that prompted my son to leave the courts of glory to give his life for you and me. And he closed by saying, and remember, I gave the life of my son so that you could live. That is the Holy Ghost. It brings the revelation of God in a powerful way that can change us from someone who would not be willing to give up their son to someone who would. In my own life, I've experienced mighty testimonies by the power of the Spirit that have changed me, have wrought a change in my heart. And I pray and hope that the same is true of you. Until next time, this is Andrew King, your fellow brother and companion in this journey that we call life. Of the Lord, let every tongue confess he reigns.